good evening. It's uh, Wednesday, December 14th, and welcome to Everyday Talk 24-7. And here we are at day 14 of the 25 days of Christmas. <laughs> it's amazing. We're over halfway there, just, to, just 11 days to go. As you can see by the thumbnail, tonight we're going to be talking about anxiety and Christmas. And, you know, it seems like that because Jesus is, is the Lord of peace, the Prince of peace, as Isaiah says, because peace is given to us, as the shepherds say in Luke 2, that anxiety shouldn't be something that is about part of the Christmas season. But it is. And in just a few minutes we have tonight, I can't address all the reasons, but I think I have four major reasons why there's so much anxiety that goes along with the Christmas season. Misplaced anxiety, for sure, but, but real anxiety. Jesus, at the end of chapter 6 in Matthew, from verses 25 down to the end of the chapter in verse 34, he talks about not worrying, not having anxiety. And he says, why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. And I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. He says, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. God will clothe you and take care of you. So don't worry about saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Isn't that awful lot to do with Christmas? Those are the things we worry about. But he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about Christmas. For tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Christ is telling us here, pursue the king. Not in a legalistic fashion, not in a rules fashion, not in a performance fashion, but pursue the king, his righteousness. And if your focus is on what God has called us to be about, then everything else falls into place. But here are four areas, as I mentioned a moment ago, that I think kind of hang us up at Christmas. They are gifts, people, memories, and our own inadequacies. Christmas and anxiety is often tied to gifts, whether we get them or give them, people in our lives, memories of Christmas, and our inadequate thoughts and feelings about this time of year. But you see, the incarnation of Christ coming to us as a human, as our brother and sister, it addresses those things. So if it's about gifts, if that's where the anxiety is, the incarnate Christ's gift of identity with him, that gives us real meaning. It frees me from having to give gifts to make someone like me or, or approve of me or to give me status and give me some kind of satisfaction. I'm giving them something that they really like. They'll like me now. Rather, because I have this identity with Christ, because he a, was a person, a human just like me, I'm free to give gifts or to show mercy as has been given to me. This is important. Because my identity is bound in Christ, gifts don't have to take on that extra meaning. If I can't afford something, I can't afford it. It's in God's timing. A good heart, as we've been talking about, a good faithful heart, day in and day out, is the most precious gift that you can give. And we talked about that. A smile, a listening ear, and using words that are pleasant are everyday gifts that you can give, which actually would be more memorable than any tangible gift you can give. So my stress, my worry about gift giving goes away when I see that I am secure in Christ and my identity with him. 
pleasing people, worrying about people, trying to make them happy, either to give gifts or to say and do the right thing, or am I dressed the right way, or you know, do I have enough time for them? Because I'm a brother and sister of Christ, pleasing people or being afraid of them or trying to win them over no longer becomes an issue. Because I am identified with Christ. He is my brother and my sister, which is even closer than this broad identity that I talked about. That means that people, I'm secure with Christ, that means I don't have to earn their favor to have peace. I don't have to make things right with them simply to be all right. I will make things right, make things right with them if I am focused on God. If I'm pursuing the kingdom of God, if I'm seeking repentance, if I'm seeking faithfulness, that's how we get right with people. Not manipulating, not trying to work things out in our favor or try and figure out what they want. I just need to pursue the kingdom of God and figure out what he wants. That builds the bridges with people. Memories. Christmas memories can be bitter or sweet. If they're bitter, we don't want to remember them. If they're sweet, maybe we want to recapture them. Is this Christmas going to be as good as last Christmas? Or the hurt that comes for Christmas? So much hurt and anxiety is associated with Christmas. Sometimes horrible things happen at this time of year. Relational issues, hard things. Death of a loved one. But because Jesus is the king, because he rules over time, then my memories can be seen in light of the fact that Jesus has been right there with me all the time. And that my ultimate peace and security comes not from remembering things and having them be good or be bad, but regardless of what happened, Jesus has been reigning. I can trust him. He's in control. My memories need to be seen in the light of no matter good or bad, Jesus has been caring for me. And then my sense of inadequacy. We're flawed, finite humans. Feeling inadequate is something that chases us around. When we're comparing ourselves to other people or we're sad with ourselves or someone is making us feel inadequate that's when I have to latch on to what Jesus is saying in that end of Matthew 6 God knows everything that you need plus he's raised me to this level that you and I are sons and daughters of the king of King Jesus my sins my failures have been resolved in him. I have a way forward to make things right. I know the path of repentance. I know the path of just knowing that Christ has paid the penalty for my sin. I don't need to make it up. I need to respond the way he wants me to. And then, most importantly, my sins, this ugly stuff that's inside of me, has been resolved at the cross. This, un this incarnation of Christ begins with the birth of the baby. It ends with the death on the cross where his body paid the awful penalty for me. I can be free there too. See, this is just a very short look at these four things whether it's gifts, people, memories, or inadequacies. Jesus, the incarnate Christ, has given us the gift of being free from being bound up by all four of those and free to enjoy the wonder of the incarnation because we're pursuing what he wants us to pursue, not what the world or people or situations tell us. We don't have to make things right. We have to follow God, and we do that. That will make everything right. 
anxiety in Christmas. It's the short look at how we don't have to be ruled by anxiety. But we can bask in the wonder of the Incarnation because this is why Jesus came. Again, thanks so much for being here. Check us out every day. Talk 24-7. Uh, you can, if you haven't turned on post notifications, turn them on. These Christmas videos will come right to you. Again, such a blessing to be with you. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow on day 15.